Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. I'm Kirsten Hillman, Canada's Ambassador to the United States. Thank you for joining this important discussion on how Canada and the United States are working together to foster diverse and inclusive trade. I would like to acknowledge the research of U.S. Fulbright student Virgil Parker and Dr. Bill Anderson of the Cross Border Institute at the University of Windsor on this subject, as well, of course, as our host, the Canada Institute at the Woodrow Wilson Center. As you know, the United States and Canada have one of the largest and strongest trading relationships in the world. But we're always trying to expand and improve this relationship. And Canada has set important goals in this regard. Specifically, we're working hard to increase diversity and inclusivity amongst business owners whose firms trade with the U.S. or have the potential to do so. Trade is good for businesses. Firms that trade tend to be more resilient, more competitive, and they create higher paying jobs. Businesses owned by women, Indigenous peoples, and other underrepresented groups are an integral part of North America's economic footprint. But we all know that these businesses don't always take advantage of the benefits of trade. Recognizing this, President Biden and Prime Minister Trudeau have mandated our teams in both countries to ensure that underrepresented business owners have access to the necessary tools and support to thrive in a competitive, global environment. We're doing this important work with the United States bilaterally and also under the Canada-US-Mexico Agreement, the CUSMA, where we've made key commitments on inclusive trade, trade and gender, Indigenous peoples, as well as having a dedicated chapter on small and medium-sized enterprises, or SMEs. The Canada CUSMA SME Committee has been very active. It's held various events to assist SMEs in leveraging the agreement's benefits. Canada, alongside the U.S., is advancing gender equality and women's empowerment at the World Trade Organization. And we look forward to continuing these efforts as members of the WTO Informal Working Group on Trade and Gender, and as supporters of the Joint Ministerial Declaration on Gender Equality and the Joint Statement Initiative on Services Domestic Regulation. Canada also continues to negotiate inclusive trade provisions wherever possible, and we were proud to advance the global trade and gender arrangement and the Indigenous Peoples Economic and Trade Cooperation Arrangements to ensure that women and Indigenous peoples have access to international trade opportunities. Large businesses also have a role to play towards more diverse trade between Canada and the United States and should look to draw on the innovation and capabilities of the thousands of SMEs participating in trade when building their supply chains. Integrated cross-border supply chains are key to a globally competitive North American economy. To remain strong and resilient, these supply chains must not be undermined by discrimination based on the gender or ethnicity of the business owners and their employees. So let's continue to be creative in our efforts towards a sustained, diverse, and inclusive trade relationship in order for our countries to grow and prosper together. Nous devons continuer cet important travail. Canada will be doing this, its part. Again, thank you to the Canada Institute, Virgil Parker, and Dr. Anderson for facilitating this opportunity. I wish you a fruitful discussion. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you to the Woodrow Wilson Center for hosting this event on U.S.-Canada trade relations in partnership with the University of Windsor's Cross-Border Institute and our distinguished Fulbright student, Virgil Parker, whose research has provided the impetus and content for our discussion. As the United States Ambassador to Canada, I am leading my country's efforts to advance the six strategic bilateral priorities or pillars laid out by Prime Minister Trudeau and President Biden in February 2021 in the roadmap for a renewed U.S.-Canada partnership. One of those pillars commits our countries to building back better. When we say building back better, we acknowledge that our goal cannot simply be economic recovery. We must also recognize that the economic impacts 
of the pandemic and inflation have been particularly devastating for small and medium-sized enterprises, especially those owned by women, people of color, indigenous peoples, and other underrepresented groups. So we must act together to ensure that the benefits and opportunities from building back extend to all populations and groups, that our recovery efforts are equitable and broad-based, and that we generate economic prosperity for everyone. Promoting, support, supporting, and building linkages between the U.S. and Canadian diverse small and medium-sized enterprises has been a key focus of my work since arriving in Ottawa in December of 2021. For example, I recently hosted a trade delegation of more than 20 small and medium-sized enterprises from Philadelphia, my hometown, to explore opportunities for building linkages with Canadian SME counterparts. Similar to Virgil's research, the United States has also supported the program with the NGO Startup Canada, which conducted focus groups of diverse women-owned U.S. and Canadian SMEs in an effort to identify barriers to and opportunities for expanding their businesses across the border. Startup Canada is now sharing those lessons learned on social media through profiles of the per participants. I know from personal experience that it is in the economic interest of both of our countries to recognize and address the barriers that inhibit diverse SME growth, to amplify the examples of their success, and to make sure that they have opportunities to succeed and prosper. Before I became an ambassador as a corporate executive, I helped create programs that ensured businesses owned by women and people of color were represented in our supply chain and had equal footing to compete for contracts and to provide services. Those programs resulted in a greater competition, a richer market of services and service provider, and ultimately better quality products and services for all. The same is true for the U.S.-Canada trade relationship. By ensuring diverse SMEs have access to information, opportunity, and capital that support their success and connectivity, we are strengthening our mutual economic prosperity. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing the results of today's discussions and event. Hello, I'm Neil Harrington, Senior Vice President for the Americas at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And it's my privilege to welcome you to this very important event. I want to commend Chris Sands and the Wilson Center's Canada Institute, longtime great partners of the Chamber, for championing inclusion and diversity in the U.S.-Canada bilateral economic relationship. I also want to thank Dr. Bill Anderson at the Cross-Border Institute at the University of Windsor and his talented Fulbright scholar Virgil Parker for their research and leadership in this critical and timely topic. I don't think I need to remind any of you that Canada and the U.S. are each other's top trading partners to the tune of more than one trillion dollars Canadian in annual bilateral goods and services exchange. As impressive as that is, I know a lot of us believe that it has far greater potential if we ensure that small businesses on both sides of the border, especially women and minority-owned small businesses, are provided a level playing field to compete. The two-year-old USMCA, for which many of us advocated extensively, successfully sought to modernize the North American trade relationship by going beyond NAFTA to enshrine best-in-class provisions in areas like e-commerce, financial services, customs, and agricultural trade. But I submit that the agreement's most important accomplishment was introducing the first small and medium-sized businesses chapter in a U.S. trade agreement. Introducing an SME chapter was a particular priority of the Canadian government, which clearly understood that micro, small, and medium-sized businesses create the vast majority of jobs in all three of our North American economies. Furthermore, women and minority-owned businesses represent the fastest-growing subset of SMEs. So ensuring that we're all working towards enhanced diversity and inclusion in the continental trade relationship is not only the right and principled thing to do. Indeed, it's a true, a true economic imperative if we're to achieve the goal we all have of making North America the most competitive economic region in the world. With this in mind, I salute all of you for participating today, 
and for doing your part to ensure opportunity for all who seek to contribute to our shared prosperity. Have a terrific discussion, and I'm already looking forward to engaging on the important work that comes out of your meeting. Thank you so much.